PSK and QPSK modulation techniques, we have seen that the information is in phase and the amplitude is fixed. Now, to make the system more robust and uh, to improve the noise immunity, in, in that case, if along with the phase, amplitude of the signal is also varied, then the, uh, the uh, system will be more robust. So, another technique which in which the phase and amplitude, both the parameters of the carrier are varied, is known as quadrature amplitude phase shift keying or it is also known as QASK or if 16 symbols are used as in standard then it, it is also known as 16 QAM quadrature amplitude modulation so here in this now we will see how the 16 symbols are represented and uh, how is the construction so here in this case uh, QASK system uh, we are considering that a symbol uh, is transmitted so symbol for uh, for a symbol is transmitted and um, which is of four bits so one symbol of four bits likewise we have 16 symbols and for 16 symbols we have different phase and different amplitude so as an example since we have taken 16 symbols we call it as 16 qm so if you see from the diagram we have four symbols in one quadrature likewise we have four second quadrature four third four and fourth four likewise we have um, 16 symbols and if you see these symbols the symbols since the variation is in amplitude and phase they don't lie on a circumference of a circle now the distance between two signal points is given by 2a where a is the distance of each symbol uh, from x-axis and y-axis you see uh, that the first symbol will have it is represented by a comma a that means a is the distance on x-axis and a is the dis distance on y-axis so likewise in uh, distance between two symbols it is um, 2a so if you find out the signal energy so the average normalized signal energy it is given by 10a square and a it is given by under root of 0.1 es where es is the symbol energy so if the distance d if you want to represent the distance d it will be d will be equal to twice of under root of 0.1 es now if we compare this distance which is 2 under root of 0.1 es where e is the symbol energy so if we compare this distance with qpsk and bpsk so the distance compared to qpsk is very very less so what is the indication of this when the distance is less the noise and interference is going to increase that means the error rate with this method is going to increase in case of qpsk the distance between two signal points was that was equal to 2 under root of eb here in this case it is 2 under root of 0.1 es so here in this case uh, the error rate is higher now if we see the generation of qask here we have four d flip flops to which the four bits are given as an input and the output of two d flip flops is given to d to a converter output of another 2d flip-flops is given to another da converter so one da converter gives you the output aet another da converter gives aot multiplied with the carriers cos and sign and the output given to the adder you get the output as vqask signal now here in this case the bandwidth of qask signal is given by twice of fb by n now here if you see the bandwidth if you compare with uh, qpsk again the bandwidth requirement of qpsk and this uh, so in case of qask the bandwidth required is half and compared to bpsk it is one fourth 
so the bandwidth requirement is very less but here in this case the distance is also less so the error rate is going to be high now if we come to the receiver how you retrieve the QASK signal now the received signal again will be given to the carrier recovery circuit and bit recovery part and the procedure for that is same uh, that is the first block is going to be since we are using four bits in one symbol the first block to which the input of the received signal given is uh, raised input to fourth power then the bandpass filter which is four times F0 the output cos 4 omega 0 t now goes to the frequency divider which is again divided by 4 and which gives the retrieved carrier as cos and sin. Now this sin and cos omega 0 t now goes to the multiplier to which the input is also given and then the output is given to the integrator. Output of the integrator goes to the A to D converter and output of A to D converter is the bits which uh, or the bit pa pattern or the bits input bits which are retrieved back. So two bits will be retrieved by one A to D converter and two will be retrieved by another A to D converter. So here in this case again uh, you have AET, AOT given to the adder and finally four bits will be retrieved at the output.